In today's study, I want to caution you that it is not for everyone. It is quite detailed and may require you to view it several times to follow everything. But if you have an interest in Bible prophecy, if you have ever wondered why some Christians believe in the, a coming seven-year tribulation, or if you wonder about a soon coming rapture of the church, then this study is for you. Welcome to Discover Bible Prophecy, prophecy that you can understand. So I'm calling this video Question and Answers. Now I produce three videos uh, on Daniel 9 and its 70 week prophecy. And so this video will answer some important viewer questions regarding that. And my prayer is that my answer will give you encouragement, even if you don't agree with me, to further study this very important prophecy. So let's begin. So what was the viewer comment? Well, in my prior videos, I determined that 457 BC is the correct year for the order to rebuild Jerusalem. Well, this person felt that I got it all wrong. He was very nice about it, but he said I got it all wrong. And the correct year was 445 BC. And he sent me some suggested links that I could view to show me his position on that. So you may ask, why is 445 BC so important? Well, it is interesting why it's so important to them. 445 BC, they claim, starts off the 70-week prophecy in Daniel 9. 173,880 uh, days later, Jesus is crucified. And that's exactly that date, days. It, uh, it places the 70th week in the future. It also places the rapture in the future, the rapture of the church, as they uh, call it. And by being raptured, they avoid the great tribulation that they say will happen on earth. So it all starts off with this 445 BC date in their thinking. So let's first off, let's take a look at these viewer supplied links. The first one is by Chuck Messler. And uh, here is the link. And I'm, I'm going to put the, uh, these links at the bottom of this video so you can link right to them. The second one is from Jack Kelly. And uh, he, he's passed away, but this is his link. And uh, it's very interesting. It's text only on his. Uh, Chuck Messler is a video. And the last one is Jacob uh, Parrish. I think that's how it's pronounced, Jacob Parrish. And that's audio only, and here's his link. So as I mentioned, all, all links for these will be in the uh, comments for this video. So you can go look at those yourself. So here are the three uh, people that were recommended to me to go study. And all three of these, uh, I reviewed uh, all three of these preachers, and so what did I learn? Well, it's going to be very interesting to show you this. By the way, I also viewed many other, quote, what I, what I call 445 BC preachers videos. So there are quite a number of them that believe 445 BC is the start of the 70 week prophecy in Daniel 9. Well, the interesting thing that I found out after studying these uh, preachers and others, that all three of them use as the source for, the, the, for this date, the exact same secular book that was written over 125 years ago. Now here's Chuck Missler, a uh, little portion of his sermon or his talk on Daniel 9 in which Jesus points them to Daniel 9, the fabled uh, prophecy that Gabriel gave Daniel in chapter 9, the famous 70 weeks. The 69 of those weeks are the most amazing passage in the entire scripture, where Gabriel says, from the commandment restored, unto, uh, restored Jerusalem unto the Messiah the King will be a specific period of time that turns out to be 173,880 days. We know the decree of Artaxerxes that was the commandment to restore the city of Jerusalem. 
And if you go through the arithmetic, it's astonishing. You come to the exact day that the triumphal entry took place on April 6 of 32 AD. Gabriel's margin for error was zero because it's exactly 173,880 days between them. And that's this area that I'm, I'm assuming is review for you because it's the it's a, a most astonishing passage in the Bible because it was translated into Greek three centuries before the Gospel period in the Septuagint version. And that's, it constitutes one of the most dramatic demonstrations that the Word of God is really the Word of God. Now, Jack Kelly, uh, as I mentioned, his was only a text. And you can see this little jaggedy line. You'll see this in this video as I go along. Whenever you see this jaggedy line, that's exactly their a quote from their uh, text that they uh, provided, either a book, we'll, we'll do that later, or a book or a text on the Internet. So this is a Bible study by Jack Kelly. Uh, like I said, he's passed away, but this is part of his sermon uh, notes on Daniel 9. And it says about 125 years ago, Sir Robert Anderson unlocked the secret of Daniel's 70 week when he teamed up with the L London Royal Observatory to discover that prophetic years are 360 days in length and consist of 12 months with 30 days each. Therefore, the 70 weeks of Daniel consists of 490 years of 300 days each and uh, he, uh, he, that's uh, Sir Robert uh, Anderson, he published this discovery in a book called The Coming Prince. And I have a link for that also, a PDF link uh, book for that book. Uh, so he, he published this in a book called The Coming Prince, which is commentary on Daniel's 70th week. And Pastor Jacob here, he also uh, has published uh, on the internet text on Daniel 9. And uh, here is that link, by the way. He says, Sir Robert Anderson laid out the dating for the prophetic prediction of Daniel 9, chapter, Daniel chapter 9, as to the time of the Messiah's arrival in his first coming in the evangelistic fellowship of professional mathematicians with figures such as Dr. Uh, Eugene and others have delved into volumes of incredible research as to the scriptural dating. So all three of these folks reference the same uh, person. By the way, I'm going to show you later on an update from, from Pastor Jacob, where he gives some uh, uh, more information on Daniel 9's prophecy, which is quite interesting, but I'll, I'll, come, I'll get into that a little bit later here. So my task was made easy by these three references. Study the same book that they used as reference to come up with 445 and to see if I agree with the conclusions in the book. So this was uh, very nice. So this is what I did. So this book, like I said, is Sir Robert Anderson. He lived from 1841 to 1918, and he came up with the date 445. So we're going to take a look at exactly what he said directly from his book. So here's my understanding of uh, Sir Robert Anderson's analysis of Daniel 9, uh, Daniel 9 and it's kind of uh, in a nutshell, so I'm just, uh, in this, for the sake of time, I'm just going to abbreviate this here real uh, quickly. So number one, the decree to rebuild Jerusalem was issued on exactly March 14th, 445 BC. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey on April 6th, 23 AD, exactly 173, 880 days from the March 14th date in 445 BC. So he, he is very precise on both of these. And Jesus was crucified in 32 AD, the last year of the 69th week of this prophecy. The 70th week does not immediately follow the 69th week. The 70th week will occur uh, about 2,000 plus years 
And, and this is called the gap. You'll, you'll see that referenced in a lot of people's studies on this. So about 2,000 years after the 69th week in the future from 32 AD. So that's when the 70th week will occur. So Jesus' baptism, anointing, and crucifixion does not occur during the 70th week. They occur during the 69th week. And finally, number six, this future 70th week, this is after, after the gap, is when the second prince, the Antichrist, makes a treaty with the Jews. And in the middle of this future 70th week, the Antichrist will break the treaty. And it gets more involved as, you, as this is explained by various people. So that, in a nutshell, is the thinking behind the uh, Daniel 9 70th week. So here it is in a visual. I like little pictures because it's easier for me to understand. So the 445 starts over here at the beginning. Then there's seven sevens, which we'll sh see is 49 years. Then there's 434 years. And that ends, this last year here, ends in 32 AD. So when Jesus is crucified. And then we have this so-called gap of, uh, and right now it's at least uh, 2,000 years. And at some future point in time, uh, there'll be a seven year period of time. And depending upon the understanding that various people have, you can be raptured either a pre-tribulation rapture, mid-trib, or post-trib. But essentially the, the rapture occurs in association with this future seven years. Well, that's not my belief, and that's from my studying the Bible, that's not what I believe. In my other videos, I showed that 457 is the start of this uh, prophecy, 49 years, and then that brings us down to the last seven years. So these are basically, in a nutshell, two different views on this prophecy. So let's brief, briefly review the 70-week prophecy in Daniel. It's a very short prophecy. There's only four Bible texts, 24, 5, 6, and 7, in 9:24. It says, 70 sevens are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in, bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy place. Know and understand this, from the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler comes, there will be seven sevens and 62 sevens. Uh, it will be rebuilt with streets and a trench, but in times of trouble. Going out to 26, it says, after the 62 sevens, the anointed one will be put to death and will have nothing. The people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end and desolations have been decreed. Finally, the last uh, text in this prophecy, he will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. Uh, in the middle of the seven, he will be put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at, at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. So there's a few prophetic things that we need to uh, understand. And this is pretty well agreed to amongst the uh, Bible scholars, that there is this key in Ezekiel 4, 6, it's also several, uh, several other places. You, we are to use a day for each year. So a day equals a year, one week equals seven days, and therefore seven days equals seven years, or 49 days, seven sevens, equal 49 years. So it says here in Daniel 9.25, know and understand this. From the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, 
the ruler comes, there will be seven sevens, that's 49 years, and 62 sevens, that's 434 years. So what does this look like? Well, here is a little illustration of the 49 years, seven weeks times seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days across the top and seven weeks vertical. So this is what this uh, equals to, it equals 49 day uh, block of time, 49 year block of time. And what does the 490 years look like? Well, I just showed you the 49 years, and that's what this is right here, 49 years. So the 490 years, you can uh, refer to it as 70 weeks, or 70 times seven weeks, seven sevens are 490 years, or 10 times 49, 10 of these. So this is what we have here. We have 10 49 blocks of years. Now that's the 490 year block of time that this prophecy is talking about. So let's get into some of the details of Sir Robert Anderson's claims in his book. Now his book I told you is called The Coming Prince. And uh, this, this is a quote out of his book in chapter nine. Uh, and uh, Sir Robert Anderson says, the trustworthiness of a witness of witnesses is tested not by the amount of truth in their evidence contains, but by the absence of mistakes. A single glaring error may serve to discredit testimony which seemed of the highest worth. So I'm going to use this criteria that he uh, himself offered in his book and see if uh, Sir Robert Anderson's testimony uh, is correct. So we find in chapter 10 here, this is a quote out of his book, says the Persian edict, which restored the autonomy of Judea, was issued in the Jewish month of Nisan. It may be, in fact, have been dated the first of Nisan, but no other day being named, the prophetic period must be reckoned according to practical com common, practice common with the Jews from the Jewish New Year day. The 70 weeks are therefore to be computed from the first of Nisan uh, BC 455. So I'll be looking for answers for the following questions. First off, was this really a Persian edict? or just letters from Nehemiah to take with him? That's my first question I wanna look at. Number two, were the letters orders to restore autonomy to Judea, or were they letters guaranteeing a safe journey and approval for timber to be taken from the king's forest? Number three, did Sir Robert Anderson supply any biblical evidence to support his claim of Nissan 1445, other than his own speculation. And lastly here, were the, letter, were the letters issued exactly on the first of Nissan? Does Sir Robert Anderson show any biblical evidence supporting this speculation of the first of Nissan? All right, let's start off with this first part here. We're gonna to go to the book of Nehemiah, chapter two, verses one to three. And I'll be reading it here. Uh, and it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes, and the king said unto me, why is thy countenance sad? Now I've uh, simplified this text here. I've left out some and I put in these extra little dots. So if you'd like to, you can take out your Bible and read, you know, pause this video and read along. Make sure I didn't leave out anything important, but I'm pretty certain I, I didn't. Okay, we'll continue here. Then I, then I, Nehemiah, said unto the king, when the city Jerusalem, the place of my father's sepulcher, my father's burial spots, that's what that is, lieth in waste, and the gates there are for consumed with fire. 
So he was complaining about the status or the state of Jerusalem. So the, the meeting with the king in the month of Nisan, uh, it, it was held in the month of Nisan, but the Bible does not give the starting day of this meeting or the day when the letters were granted. It just says in the month, it came to pass in the month of Nisan. So there's nothing here attributing any significance to any particular day of the month that this occurred at. Okay, going on to four and five here in Nehemiah. Then the king said unto me, for what dost thou make us request? What, what do you want from me? So I prayed to the God of heaven and I said unto the king that thou wouldest send me to Jerusalem unto the city of my father's sepulchers that I may build it. So Nehemiah here, he asked the king for permission to go to Judea to rebuild the city. This was his request to go rebuild the city. Moreover, Nehemiah said unto the king, if it pleases the king, let letters, notice it's plural, let letters be given to me. So the Bible says that Nehemiah asked for two letters. The first letter, the, govern, the governors beyond the river, that they may convey me safely to, over till I come unto Judea. He wanted safe passage through these other governors' uh, lands. So letter number one gave Nehemiah a safe passage beyond the river. That's all that it did. And the second letter unto uh, the, uh, the second letter talked about the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace and that, that connects the house and the walls of the city and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me these letters. So he wanted letters from the king for permission to cut trees down from the king's forest to rebuild the beams, the gates, and the doorway. That's what the second letter was all about. Here again in uh, Nehemiah 12, we find something interesting. And I rose in the night, neither I told any man what my God had put in my heart to do in Jerusalem. So it was God who put in Nehemiah's heart the idea to build up the wall. And we continue on in 17 and 18. We hear, we read where Nehemiah is talking to his friends. It says, let us build up the wall of Jerusalem that I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So the king only spoke to him about rebuilding the city. He didn't give him any edict to go do that. So Nehemiah kept it a secret, his plan to rebuild the city. And uh, secondly here, the king only spoke to Nehemiah about building the city. Never gave him an edict. All right, let's look at this part here. In Daniel 9.25, it says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, the streets shall be built again and the walls even in troublous times. So in Nehemiah 2.1, we read, And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes. So this is when this edict or this uh, uh, meeting with the king took place. It was in the month of Nisan. So we already have learned that only two letters were given Nehemiah in this meeting. The meeting with the king started sometime in the month of Nisan. No exact date is in the Bible for this meeting. So Robert Anderson is guessing that the exact date of 1 Nisan 445 uh, is the date. It's, it's not from the Bible. It's uh, uh, He kind of came up with this on his own. And then he jumps to the conclusion that the 70 weeks starts from Nisan 1, 445. 
So with this being such an important uh, prophecy in his mind, uh, I think this is a pretty weak uh, proof that he has from the Bible on this. So this date of Nissan 1, 440 by, uh, BC is only Sir Robert Anderson's opinion. There is no Bible reference backing up his assertion. So in summary, there, there's no edict in Nehemiah to restore the build and build Jerusalem. There's no edict in Nehemiah to build the streets. There's no edict in Nehemiah to build the walls and foundations. There's no exact day of the month in Nehemiah for these letters to be given to him. And the first of Nisan is only an educated guess by Sir Robert Anderson. So that's how I see the Bible's uh, contribution on this. So where does Sir Robert Anderson get 445 BC as the date to rebuild edict? So let's read from his uh, chapter five. The question remains whether the date of this edict can be accurately asserted. And there is a most striking fact claims notice. In the sacred narrative of the date of this event, which marked the beginning of the 70 week, is fixed only by reference to the reg regional error of a Persian king. Therefore, we must needs turn to secular history, that means outside of the Bible, to assert the epoch and the historic dates for this very period. So he admits here that the Bible does not give the exact date of this edict. And we're going to find out that the exact date that he, he uh, puts forth is very important to the claims that he made. So he admits that the date for 445 edict cannot be gotten from the Bible, so he uses secular history. So my conclusion so far, the proof for 445 BC as the year for the start of the 70 week prophecy is so far very weak. But we're not finished, so we got a lot, of, lot to go here. Uh, and the date of Nissan 1, 445 for the exact start of the 70 week prophecy is pure speculation from outside the Bible. I don't think you can uh, say anything but that.